what we're going to do is practice some different examples of a Diels Alder reaction. Now, what is a Diels Alder reaction? Well, it's when you have a diene in, in its conjugated system, and you have a dienophile with an electron withdrawing group, and when they react together, they form this cycloalkene where the new sigma bonds are those two bonds right here formed from these pi bonds moving over here and this new pi bond is formed from this third pi bond moving over here. So that's the gist of a diels alder reaction. Now what about these four different examples? Well we have different groups, different electron drawing groups, different electron donating groups and we don't know how are they going to orient themselves. Well there's a few things we want to look at. The first thing we want to look at is important resonance contributors. Those are gonna help us figure out which carbon is the most reactive for the dienophile and the diene. So generally, on the diene, we're going to look for the carbon with a negative charge on it in its resonance contribution. Now, in the dienophile, we're going to look for the carbon that has a positive charge on it. That's, one's, that, that's the one that's going to be most reactive. Now, the third thing we have to look at is the endo rule. Now, the endo rule tells us that if we have an electron withdrawing group on the dienophile, we want it to be facing inwards into the diene. And because of that, when the bonds form, it's going to be a dashed group. It's going to be facing away from us. So that's the endo rule. And that applies to all of these reactions. So let's start off with this first one. In this first one, the important resonance contribution for this diene looks something like this. So I'm not going to draw the double bonds. We have our lone pair on the oxygen, and it can form a double bond over here. And then this double bond over here can move to become a negative charge in this carbon. And then that bond just remains as it is. So that's the most reactive carbon. Now what about the dienophile? Well, we have our carbon with its double bond to the oxygen and the hydrogen. I'm not going to draw the pi bonds yet. What ends up happening is that the pi bond moves over here, this first one. And the second pi bond on the oxygen moves and becomes a negative charge on the oxygen. So we have a new pi bond over here, a negative charge on the oxygen, and a positive charge on this carbon. So that, that means that this carbon right here and this carbon right here are the most reactive and they want to bond. So what we're going to do is reorient this diene, or dienophile rather, and make it bond to the diene in a proper fashion. So we have this group right here with the ether, and then we have our dienophile. We want to face this electron withdrawing group inwards, and we want this positive charged carbon to be facing near that carbon. So we're going to have this right here. And we simply form two new sigma bonds, one over here, one over here, and then this third pi bond goes over here, and we form that double bond in there. So our final group looks something like this, where we have our cycloalkene, we have our double bond right there, we have our ether right there, and we have our electron withdrawing group, which should be dashed going like this. Now, the reason this actually does not matter if it's dashed or just a straight line is because the carbon that it formed a bond with has two hydrogens. So whether it's dashed or, not, or wedged, it's going to be the same thing. It's the same molecule. There's no, it doesn't really matter if we draw it as wedged or dashed here in this situation. Now what about this second one? In this second one, we have the same rule applies. We want the endo, we want the endo rule to apply where we have this electron withdrawing group pointing inwards, and we want the most positively charged carbon to react. Now this group right here is very similar to this one, so we know that this carbon right here is going to be the positively charged one based on the resonance contribution. And with this diene, the resonance contribution is a little weird. So what ends up happening is that instead of having a double bond come from like an oxygen, we don't really have that with these methyl groups. What we can do though is just make the resin the pi bonds move like this, and we end up getting a group that looks like this, where we have our methyls and we have our pi bonds that look something like this, and we have a negative charge over here. So that tells us that this carbon right here is the one that's most reactive. It's the one that wants to bond with this carbon right here. So we're going to flip this dienophile and make it bond with this one properly. So we end up having this right here, the diene, and we have the dienophile appropriately drawn right here, the cyanide, 
And then we're just going to create our new sigma bonds right here and our new pi bond over there. Now this is going to be stereospecific. So how are we going to determine whether it's wedged or dashed on these two carbons? Because they're going to be switching from sp2 to sp3 and they're going to be chiral carbons. So on this one, there is no chirality on that because it's sp2 carbon. But on these, we know by the end of the rule that this electron withdrawing group wants to be going down and away from us. So this cyanide is going to be going down. But what about the methyl group? Well, the methyl group, it's facing away from this reaction. So we know that this carbon right here, the, one, the group that's facing inwards, which is the hydrogen that's not drawn, it's going to be going upwards as a wedge because this cyanide is, be going, is going to be facing it. Since the cyanide is going down, the, the hydrogen is going to be going up as a wedge. And so the only other option for this methyl is that it's going to be wedged, or dashed rather. So that methyl group is going to be dashed. Now what about this third one? Well, in this third example, well, we have two electron withdrawing groups, so we don't have to worry about which carbon is the most reactive. Both of them are reactive. But on this diene, we have an S-trans conformation. So like this uh, diene is not shaped in the way that we want it. We want it to be S-cis like these two but it's S-trans. What we can do is rotate this bond right here, the sigma bond, around this way. So I'm going to draw this bond right here straight like this, and then I'm going to draw everything around it uh, in an S-cis fashion. So if we have this bond right here drawn straight, we're going to have a bond like this and a bond like that, and a double bond here. And if we rotate the bond over here like this, we end up getting is our S-cis. And since this is also, this methyl group is cis, to this group right here, it's going to be going like this. So that's what our diene looks like when it's an S cis conformation. Now, then we have our dienophile, which is just the one with the two cyanide groups. We're going to make the cyanide groups face inwards because that's based on the endo rule. And we're just going to form our new double, our new sigma bonds, just like we normally do. We're going to form a sigma bond here, sigma bond here, and this one's going to go back here like normal. So our final product is going to be pretty stereospecific. We're going to get our cycloalkene with our double bond right here. Now this methyl group, it's pointing inwards, so it's going to be going up. And since the cyanide is pointing inwards, because it's the dienophile, it's going to be pointing downwards. Same thing with this cyanide, it's also going to be pointing downwards because it's inwards. And this methyl group is pointing out, so it's going to be a dash. So that's what this final product looks like. Now what about this last example right here? Well, we're going to get a pretty interesting product. What's going to happen is that we know that this carbon right here is the most reactive. And how do we know that? Well, based on the resonance contribution, we have, oh, and there's a missing double bond right there that is not drawn. Well, that's what it looks like. Well, based on the resonance contribution, this one's going to go over here and this bond's going to go over here, so this carbon is going to be left with a positive charge. So that's the most reactive one. Now, which is the most reactive bond, uh, carbon for the diene? Well, we can have a bond go over here and a pi bond go over here and we get a negative charge on this carbon right here. So that tells us that this carbon and this carbon are the most reactive. So we're going to reorient this in a way that will make it easy to draw. We have our cyclo, our diene, I'd rather. We have our two double bonds right there. We have our electron donating group. And we have our diene file. We're going to flip it. So we have our double bond. We're going to have our electron withdrawing group facing inwards, rather. So let's make it face inwards over here. And then. We're going to have our oxygen. Yep, we drew it, drew it correctly. Now, based on this endo rule, this group is going to want to go downwards. And we're going to have new sigma bonds form like this. So this carbon is going to form a sigma bond right here with this carbon. This carbon over here is going to form a sigma bond with that one. And this is just going to remain here. And we end up getting this interesting product. So. The final product looks something like this. We have a bicyclic molecule. So let's draw it better. All right. So we have this 
right here. We have a middle ring in the middle right here going upwards. That's because of these two methyl groups are connected. This group is connected over here. We have our double bond over there that formed over here originally. And then we have the ender rule, which says that these groups need to be going down. This ether is over here. And this carbon over here with the double bonds can be facing over there. So we're going to have this carbon over here with the double bond, the other oxygen, and fit point connected to another carbon, and then connected to this. So these are going to be pointing down. And the reason they're pointing down is because of this endo rule. This oxygen is not really pointing down. It's basically planar because of this sp2 carbon. We've got a bicyclic molecule over here. And we have the carbon that, is, that has a double bond basically on the opposite side of this ether based on how we oriented this because of the most, basically, the most reactive carbon. So we have the negative charged one here, the positively charged one here, and that's why we oriented it the way it is.